I want to thank God because of this uh, opportunity to share the word of God. Nashukuru kwa sababu ya fursa hii kushiriki neno la Bwana. Um bishop uh, our bishop together As with the Reverend Alice. Askofu na Kasisi Alice. Uh, Reverend Millicent. Kasisi Millicent. Pastor Pastor Kibera. Chungaji Kibera. Also Reverend Kaunda and the pastoral team. Na pia uh, Kasisi Kaunda na wachungaji. For allowing me to finish my Someone for last Sunday. Kwa kunikubalia kumalizia ujumbe wangu wa Jumapili iliyopita. What I'm going to share today nitaendele nike nitaendele kile nitanena leo. It is a continuation of what I started last week. Ni kile ni uendelevu wa kile nilichoanzisha wiki iliyopita. And you remember the topic of last week? Na mnakumbuka ujumbe ama mada ya wiki iliyopita? Transformation from a worm to a haru. Kuweza kubadilishwa kutoka kwa mdudu hadi kwa kuwa ile ya kuchimba. And if you want to keep it short say from warm to haru. Na ukitaka kuiweka kidogo kutoka kwa mdudu hadi a, ile ya kuchimba. And I I, I really I really went into uh, discussing more about the warm. Na nikaendelea sana kuongea kuhusu yule mdudu and uh, we were able to discuss what is a worm tukaangalia mdudu yule ni nini the definition of a worm tukaangalia maana yake mdudu ni nini and we also saw the features of a worm na tukaangalia tukaangazia pia tabia uh, zile za yule mdudu but before i go into the discussion of today lakini kabla niingie ndani kwa yale ambayo tunaongea leo i would like us to again read isaiah 41 verse 14 to 16 tutasoma isaiah 41:14 hadi 16 like we did last sunday kama vile tu tulivyofanya jumapili iliyopita because this is our base scripture kwa sababu hii ndio andiko ambalo tunaangazia in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu and if if you'd allow me na kama utanikubalia I request you all to stand up. Ningaliwaulizeni tusimame sote. As we read the word of God. Tunaposoma andiko neno la Mungu. We will start with the New King James version. Taanza na ile version ya King James. Verse number 14. Utuweke 14. We can read together fear not. You, fear not. You, you warm Jacob, Jacob, you men, men of Israel. Israel. I, I will help you, you says the, the Lord, Lord and your redeemer, the Holy One, one of Israel. Israel. Behold I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff you shall winnow them the wheat shall carry them away and the whole wheat shall scatter them you shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the holy one of Israel Let's read in New Living Translation. Tusome kwa ile version ya New Living. New Living Translation. NLT. Not NIV. Yeah, good. Let's start together. One, two, go. Though you are a lowly worm, O Jacob, don't be afraid, people of Israel, for I will help you. I am the Lord, your Redeemer. I am the Holy One of Israel. You will be a new threshing instrument with many sharp teeth. You will tear your enemies apart, making chaff of mountains. You will toss them into the air, and the wind will blow them all away. A whole wind will scatter them. Then you will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. And finally, let's read in the message translation. Message. message message let's start to go do you feel, feel like, like a lord warm jacob, jacob? don't be afraid feel, feel like a fragile insect israel i, I will, will help you i, I god want to reassure you the god, god who buys you back the holy of israel i am, I am transforming you from warm to haru from insect to iron as a sharp toothed harrow you will smooth out the mountains turn those tough old hills into loamy soil you'll open the rough ground to the weather to the blasts of sun and wind and rain but you'll be confident and exuberant 
expansive in the holy of Israel. Amen. You can be seated. So, last week we, we had the definition of a womb. And we realized that uh, a womb is a creeping animal. Moving slowly and carefully in order to avoid being hard and noticed. We also realized that uh, a worm is a burrowing animal. Burrowing. Dig, dig into or through something solid. You know, digging into something that is almost impossible to go through it. And the third definition, we, uh, we learned that it, uh, a worm is an invertebrate. An animal lacking backbone. Inakosa auti wa mkongo. And then we, we, we learned about the four features of a worm. And the first feature, we learned that it creeps down in the ground during the day and comes above ground at night to feed. Therefore, during the day, you cannot see a worm. And the other feature, we learned it has a small brain. And the third feature we learned is that they do not have eyes. They are light sensitive. And the fourth feature we learned is that if the skin is dry for too long, it will eventually die. And there are a few statements that I made when I was finishing that a harrow by itself cannot do anything. A threshing sledge by itself cannot thresh the mountain. Something or somebody needs to use it in order to break the mountain. When God is, you know, transforming us from the worm to a threshing sledge, from a worm to a harrow, it means God is turning you to an implement or a vessel. So that he can start using you. A man or a machine must use the implement in order to harrow or thresh the land. And we said as God is transforming us into a harrow from a worm, we must allow God to use us. Why? Because we are just implements which God is using to plow our mountains. And I say that a worm does everything by itself for itself. A worm does everything by itself and for itself. But a harrow waits for the worker to start using it. And looking at us this morning, I see many threshing sledges. I see many harrows waiting for the master to start using in order for you to be used of God. Therefore, God is removing the burden of you having to do it yourself. By transforming you from a worm into a harrow. Is there anything that is too difficult for you? I want to I, I want to let you know that 
that with God nothing will be impossible. And the reason I'm saying this is that it is not yourself to do the harrowing. God will do the harrowing for you. Mungu atakufanyia uchimbaji kwako. You just need to present yourself as that vessel. Wewe ujitokeze kama chombo kile. Which God has made and transformed you to be. Ambacho Mungu ametengeneza ukaweze kuwa. We must be a harrow in the master's hands. Lazima ukakuwe jembe katika mtumishi ya muumbaji wako. And today I want to focus now on the harrow. Na leo nitaangazia jembe. And what is the definition of a haru? I'll request the media to show us the haru. Before I define the haru. So this is a simple haru. It is a simple haru that everybody knows. But we have a more modern haru that it is projected in our screens. And I'm sure those watching us online, they can see it also. You can see it has very many tines or teeth. And it is bigger. That means it can do more work than the other one. And I want you to let it remain there. As, as, as I handle the, you know, the definition of what is a haru. In the dictionary, a haru as a noun, it is an implement consisting of a heavy frame set. Aha, kwa hivyo ni chombo ambacho kimetengenezwa na uzito fulani. Let me repeat it. Wacha nirudie. What is a haru? Eh? Aha, Definition ha, in the dictionary. Eh? Aha, kwenye kamusi. It is an implement consisting of a heavy frame set. Aha, ni chombo ambacho kimetengenezwa na uzito. Like you can see it. Please Kama let it. Vile unavyokiona pale. Please let it let us have it back. Wacha tu iwe pale. It consists of a heavy frame set with teeth. Or tines. Which is dragged over plowed lad to break up clothes. To remove weeds and cover seed. Don't worry about the bombastic names I will explain. Tines or T-I-N-E-S it means they are sharp points. There are sharp points such as that on a fork. There are two or more projecting parts at the end of a fork. So the heavy frame has a set of tines or teeth. Ile uzito ambayo imetengenezwa iko na meno mika, meno kali. And when it is dragged over a plowed land, hivyo basi inapoperekwa katika shamba iliyolimwa, it breaks up lumps of earth clay. Aha, inavunja vunja udongo. Or it, it, as it is in this dictionary, it is clods. It breaks up clods. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to realize something. A haro, a haro is very different from a plow. Because sometimes when, when we think about a haro, we are thinking about the same thing as a plow. But these are two different things. Because according to the dictionary, the definition in the dictionary, a haro is dragged over already plowed lad. Uh -huh. A haro is dragged over a plowed lad. Praise the name of 
praise the name of the Lord. A plow is a farm tool for loosening or turning the soil before sowing seeds or planting. And plows were traditionally drawn by oxen and oxes. But modern farms are drawn by tractors. A plow may have a wooden, iron or steel frame. But it has a blade attached to cut and loosen the soil. So, in other words, a plow has a blade attached to it. But a harrow has teeth. Praise the name of the Lord. And church, this is very important. Because God did not ask Jacob. Or God did not transform Jacob from a worm to a plow. But he was transforming him from a worm into a harrow. Praise the name of the Lord. For us to understand a little bit more, I would like the media to give us the, uh, the picture of a plow. It, it's not very clear there, but these are different types of plows. But where I come from, you know, we, we call them morao, morao, plow. You know, there are some people who use it, you know, with their hands. There are some people who usually use bulls. You know, in order to plow the land. And more importantly, I'll request the media to give me Na, ni ulize, ni patiwe, the picture of the tractor and the plow. Ile, uh, tractor, ikiwa na ile jembe ya kulima. Uh, oh, no, this is, uh, yeah. I meant the tractor Aha. and the plow. This Aha. one. Hilio. Now, this is a plow he, ni chombo cha kulima, being pulled by kikuwa, a tractor. Kina vutwa na tractor. Behind it you can see the clothes. Nyuma yake unaona uh, ile vi, vi, vitu ambavyo vinaachwa ama vinalimwa. The earthen clay. Ile udongo ambayo imetokea ikilimwa. You cannot plant seeds when you know, a lad has just been plowed. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you give us the other, the last picture of a plowed lad? Yeah. This is a lad that is already plowed. But you can see there are heaps of soil. You cannot easily do the planting there. Give us again the picture of a haru and the tractor. Uh, because there is the haru machine, the tractor and the haru. Yeah, this one. If you look at this tractor, it is pulling the harrow. And as you can see the soil there, it is in small pebbles. That means you can easily do your planting in this in this place. And give us again the tractor and the plow. Picture. Praise the name of the Lord. So these are big clothes. These are big clothes or big oven. You cannot plant there. 
Church, it is so powerful. The reason I brought all these pictures is because God is sending a powerful message to us in this year of threshing our mountains. Before a harrow is used, there must have been plowing done already. In other words, God will not ask you to go and start harrowing before the plowing is done. Praise the name of the Lord. God will not send you to a mountain to thresh it before himself going fast there and harrowing the mountain removing the bushes removing all the hard rocks and making it simple for me and you so that you can start threshing that mountain I don't know whether you are getting me church this year of threshing the mountain God has already gone ahead of us he has already plowed our mountain he has already prepared that mountain for you Though that mountain seems it is already existing there, but you can be able to thresh it. You can be able to thresh it. You can be able to harrow it. Because God has already prepared it for you. You may be asking me, Pastor, I have a big problem. I have a big problem. You don't go what I'm you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what is happening in my life. You don't know what has happened to me. But I came to let you know that God had already seen that problem. And he has harrowed it so that you may be able to handle that problem. No problem is too big for our God. He goes ahead of you to prepare that mountain. He goes ahead of you to prepare you for that challenge. Praise the name of the Lord. Deuteronomy 1 and verse number 30. Deuteronomy 1 and verse number 30. The Bible says the Lord your God who, who goes before you he will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. I came to announce to somebody that the Lord our God he will go before you. The Lord our God will go before your problems. The Lord our God will go before your needs because he will give you what you require. He has already prepared. He will fight for you. He will provide for you. It will be easy for you to thrash that mountain. Nothing is impossible with our God. And Deuteronomy 31 and verse number 8. The Bible says that the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Do not be dismayed. And do not fear. Because the Lord is the one who goes before you. 
yako there is nothing as assuring hakuna jambo la kuhakikisho as knowing where i am today god had already gone ahead of me and he has already harrowed the ground he has already prepared the platform for me before you arrive in your, at your workplace god had already prepared the journey for you church i would, I would like us to realize that our god is so concerned even with the minutest things in our lives anashukulikia mambo hata yale madogo katika maisha yako when you wake up in the morning ukasubuhi he knows the kind of dress you shall wear anajua utava nini when you move out of your house unapotoka nyumbani mwako he has gone ahead of you ameshaenda mbele yako he knows the matatu that you shall use wa matatu utakayotumia and those that are driving na wale ambao wanaendesha as you drive along the road unapoenda katika god has already gone ahead of you wala mungu ameshaenda mbele yako and that's why you not have any accident because he is concerned about your life he is standing you from a worm to a harrow he is concerned about your life and he knows that we are weak people He knows that we cannot make it with our own strength. He knows that we cannot thresh our mountains with our own ability. That's why he is going ahead of us. He is preparing that mountain for me. Isaiah 45 and verse 2 I will go before you and make the rough places smooth I will shatter the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron God will go before you God will go before you He didn't ask Jacob to plow the land but he asked him to harrow the land because he knew that Jacob was a weak person and Jacob is our representative because without God going ahead of us without God going ahead of us we will definitely fail because you cannot make it we cannot make it on our own we need god we need god you need god hosea chapter number 10 verse number 10 verse 11 to 13 In the message translation it says Ephraim was a trained heifer that loved to thresh Ah Ephraim alikuwa amejifunza kuweza kulima Passing by and seeing her strong sleek neck I wanted to harness Ephraim Put Ephraim to work in the fields Judah plowing Jacob doing what Harrowing. Jacob doing what? Harrowing. Harrowing. And verse number 12. of. So righteousness reap love. It's time to till the red earth. It is time to do what? To till till the, the red earth. earth. The earth has which has already been harrowed. It's time to dig in with God until he arrives with righteousness ripe for harvest hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord the book of genesis related the name ephraim to, to the hebrew roots meaning to be fruitful of course the name judah is derived from the hebrew word yanda na juda inatokana na neno la kibrania yanda which means to praise ambayo inamaanisha kusifu now the name jacob yakobo nayo 
is derived from the Hebrew you know from the Hebrew verb which means to follow inatokana na neno la kibrania la kufuata Jacob was born grabbing into his twin brother you know Esau's heel aha Jacob alizaliwa akifuatilia kwa karibu sana ndugu yake Esau Jacob in Hebrew It means inamaanisha one who follows on another's heels yule ambayo anafuatwa anafuata nyayo za mwingine one who follows on another's heels yani anayefuata nyayo za mwingine in other words if i read again hosea 10 verse 11 to 13 hosea 10:11 hadi 13 you know ifrim or Fruitfulness was a trained heifer that loved to thresh. Ya kwamba aha kuzaa matunda alikuwa ameweza kufunzwa kuweza kulimia. You know let me finish it. Passing by and seeing her strong sleek neck I wanted to harness fruitfulness. Aha. Put fruitfulness to work in the fields. Praise plowing one who follows harrowing can i repeat it rudie tutena fruitfulness was a trained heifer that loved to thresh passing by and seeing her strong sleek neck i wanted to harness fruitfulness put fruitfulness to work in the fields praise plowing and one who follows harrowing praise the name of the lord praise the name of the lord church the mountain that you are threshing aha kanisa mlima ambao unasiaga should not be just any mountain sio mlima tu unafaa kwa wowote ule it should be a fruitful mountain lazima ukwe mlima unaozaa fruitfulness should be in that mountain mlima uwe uwe unaweza kuzaa fruitfulness should be in that field kwa unaweza kuzaa matunda and as we are doing this we should allow praise to go ahead of us lazima tukubali sifa iende mbele yetu we should allow yanda to go ahead of us and start plowing that land. Yakomba sifa iende mbele yetu ili kwamba ikaweze kuanza kuchimba shamba ile. Is there something that you are believing God for? Je, kuna kitu unamwaminia Mungu? Before you start handling that situation. Kabla hujaanza kushughulikia na jambo lile. Let praise go before you. Wacha sifa iende mbele yako. Start praising God in the midst of your problems. Anza kumsifu Mungu katika jambo lile ama shida ile. Before you start threshing that problem. Kabla hujaanza kuisiaga shida ile. You must allow the praises from within you to start harrowing that problem first. Lazima ukubali sifa kutoka ndani ikaweze kuanza kuchimba ile shida mbeleni. And that is why God insisted on Jacob. Na ndio maana Mungu anaisisitizia Yakobo that I am I am transforming you from a worm into a threshing sledge. Nina kugeuza kutoka kwenye ile mdudu ili ukaweze kuwa kikatacho. I'm transforming you into a haro. Ukaweze kukua ile jembe ama ile ile huma inayokata. Because because God himself kwa sababu Mungu mwenyewe will do the harrowing for you. Atachimba kwa niaba yako. Will do the harrowing for you. Atachimba kwa niaba yako. And when you start threshing your problems When you start crashing your mountains it will be an easy way it will be an easy task Praise the name of the Lord Hallelujah I would like to say this in Isaiah 28 verse 23 to 26 The Bible says Listen to me now Listen to me now. Nesikizeni sasa. Give me your closest attention. Hebu nipatie nafasi yako ya karibu. Give me your closest attention. Nipatie nafasi yako ya karibu. Do farmers plow? Je. And plow 
and do nothing but plow or harrow and harrow and do nothing but harrow? Verse 25. After they have prepared the ground, don't they plant? Don't they scatter dill and spread cumin? Plant wheat and barley in the fields and also raspberries along the borders. They know exactly what to do and when to do it. Their God is their teacher. Wow. Their God wow. is their teacher. Wow. Church this morning, God is reminding us that this year of threshing our mountains, this year of harrowing our mountains, there is more that is expected of us. Because you cannot continue to harrow and harrow and harrow and leave the mountain harrowed. I think it is only a fool who would harrow a big portion of land and then go back to his closet. And then, you know, it's like life continues. You must do the sowing. You must do the planting. The reason this year is the year of threshing our mountains. It is because God is preparing us for a big harvest. But you will not harvest. If you do not so, at the end of the year, when we look back and see the mountains that you have threshed, will you be able to see the kind of the kind of plants that have already grown from it? Will you be able to see the fruits that are growing in your threshed places? Part of the reason we are not receiving whatever that we are supposed to receive up to this month. Because in the month of January we were threshing. In February we threshed the mountains of February. We threshed the mountains of March. And last month we threshed the, you know, you know, the mountains of April. I would pose that question to you. What are you doing with that threshed land? Are you sowing seeds in that threshed place? Be because once you leave and God says rain, what will happen is that weeds will start growing. And then you go to square one. God, this mountain, it is full of weeds. God, what can I do? And God will do the same thing that he has done. He will go and harrow the land. And then it is upon you to start threshing the land. You thresh the land. But if you go back home and you do nothing, you still go back to the same place. God is requiring me and you to sow seeds of righteousness. To sow seeds of righteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. God is requiring us to sow seeds. To sow seeds. But something that is so spectacular, church, the Bible says in Isaiah 28, the last verse, they know exactly what to do and when to do it. They know exactly what to do and when to do it. The problems that we face every day is mostly that we do not know what to do. 
Chakufanya. We do not know what to do when we want to do it. And we do not know when to do it. You know, many a times mwingi, we could be threshing a mountain that we are not supposed to thresh. You could be threshing a mountain that you are not supposed to start threshing. You could be even threshing at a time that you are not supposed to be threshing. You need to depend on God. You need to make God your teacher. So that you know when to do the threshing. And even which mountain you are supposed to thresh. There are some problems that are not for us to resolve. There are some challenges that you are supposed to avoid. There are some mountains in your life that you are not supposed even to touch. These are the mountains which God himself has not plowed. If you start threshing a mountain that God himself has not plowed, you will do a hard work. You will try to prepare that, that mountain. You will try to thresh mountain, but it will be impossible. And speaking to somebody who is threshing a mountain that he is not supposed to thresh, Church, make God your teacher. Make God your teacher. And he will help you to know which mountain to thresh. He will help you to know which mountain he has already plowed. So that you can be able to thresh it. We have so many mountains in our lives. But not all those mountains we are going to thresh them. Yes, you can say like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But these all things that you are doing, it is not literally everything. It is only those things that are in Christ Jesus. It is only those things that God has already harrowed. It is only those things that God has already plowed. Anything that God has harrowed in advance for you, you can literally do everything. Nothing will be impossible. Nothing will be impossible. May you make God your teacher. May you make God your teacher this morning. May you make God your teacher to know the mountains that you are going to thresh so that you don't fight battles that are not your battles. So that you don't waste time when you are supposed to do something else. To know what you are supposed to do and when you are supposed to do it. And I would like all of us to rise up to our feet. Now that God has transformed you into a hero. And God has gone ahead of you. He has already plowed the land. He has already plowed that mountain. He has prepared a breakthrough for you. But this breakthrough will not come until you start threshing. There is a path for you to do. This year of threshing. Allow yourself to be used by God to handle that problem. To tackle that mountain. Because Jehovah he has already plowed it. He has already made it easy for you. 
And I would like you to lift up your both hands and ask God that from today the remaining months of this year he will help you to plow, to plow he will help you to thresh the mountains that he has already plowed. He may help you to know the mountains he has already prepared and avoid any other mountain that is not prepared for you. And I see him giving you great breakthroughs because there is no mountain that you cannot climb. There is no valley that you will not be able to cross. Because when we say, you say we, you mean me and Jesus. Jesus is going to help you to plow that mountain. To plow that mountain. Open your mouth and ask God to help you. Open your mouth and ask God to help you. May God be your help. May God be your help this morning. May God be your help this morning. May God be your help this morning. May God help you to thresh your mountain. May God help you. Do you feel lowly like a warm Jacob? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, church. God says, I will help you. I will help you. And he says, I, God, I, God, we want to reassure you that it is God together with his totality. It is God together with his totality that he will come and help you. That is why he's not just saying that I will help you. He is not saying I will help you. But he is saying I, God, I, God, will help you. I, God, will help you. Nothing is too difficult for God. Nothing is too difficult for God. It could be a situation that you've been going through for a long time. The Bible has reminded us that I, God will help you. It could be a situation. You do not know what to do. When you look right, left, up, down, you don't see any solution. But this morning, Jehovah is saying, I, God, will help you. He will go ahead of you. He will go ahead of you. And he will fight that battle for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God will fight that battle for you, brother. God will fight that battle for you, sister. Because he is going ahead of you. He is going ahead of you. He is going ahead of you. To prepare for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nothing is too difficult for God. 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 That's why this morning, God is turning you from a warm. He is turning you. He is transforming you from a worm to a harrow. But don't keep on harrowing. You need to keep sowing. The portion you harrow you need to sow because at the end of this year there's going to be a great harvest. You could be saying Pastor, I don't know all these things you are talking about. 
because this God I don't know. Sababu Mungu huyu simjui. I've been trying to follow him. Kwa nikimfuata but every time I come closer to him, many things happen. Or many times when I make a decision, I find myself going back doing the same old things again. It seems for me I am helpless. I came to let you know there is a God that is going to transform you fully this morning. He gonna give you new strength. He gonna make you a hero. He gonna transform you from a sinner to a saint. And you'll have new strength to be able to overcome the enemy.